Hey everyone, this is Akka from Underdog and this week's gonna be a short one because I'm on holiday. Let's just talk about the signal chain and what it is. When you are working in your DAW, you might put a sound on the timeline, hit play, and then you hear that sound. So the sound is first in the DAW, then it's in your brain. A very simple, happy ending, right? Wrong. <laughs> Completely wrong. Let's rewind that back all the way to the beginning. So, so someone created your DAW software, binary code, ones and zeros, right? And in that ones and zeros world, you put a sound, you create a sound with ones and zeros. Let's not even talk about the sound design of it, right? But let's say you have a sound on your timeline, it's ones and zeros. What now? Well, first of all, it starts on the timeline, then it passes through the channel strip, which is the fader, and any effect you might have on it. Fair enough, it's a digital world, we can make that so that it's pretty much 100% transparent. Your sound doesn't get changed at this point. Then it comes through your master channel. Do you have anything on your master channel? Many people do, so don't forget that your sound is passing through that. Then depending on your computer settings, that sound is passed on to the operating system. Again, another system of ones and zeros, which has its own agenda for how to pass on ones and zeros. In a perfect world, your sound doesn't change too much. Now this digital sound, which has come from your timeline, through your DAW, through your operating system, is now passed on to some hardware, which has as its role to convert convert that sound from digital to analog. So a digital to analog conversion. That means that those ones and zeros have to be turned into voltages. Voltages that are supposed to represent sine waves that are fluctuating at 20,000 times per second. You can imagine that the quality of such a piece of gear could potentially have an impact on how faithfully those ones and zeros get turned into voltages. But let's say that in a lot of situations, the quality is good enough. Now you've got voltages in a wire. Cool. Now those voltages usually go into some kind of speakers, right? Some monitors. Okay, so some monitors that you've got placed around your room. So it goes through a cable into these monitors where the monitors split it up into different bands. Usually your monitors have several drivers in them. So you have a woofer and a tweeter and maybe a third driver in the middle. So that means that inside of the speaker, there has to be a little bit of electronica, which is called a crossover, which is like a whole bunch of filters that splits your signal into the high, mids and lows, or just the highs and the lows, and then passes that on to those drivers. Now those drivers are just basically kind of pieces of paper, some membranes, let's say, that are then magnetically pushed in and out to try to reproduce the voltages that were in those cables. So this paper cone is trying to vibrate 20 times per second and 400 times per second and 20,000 times per second to represent all the frequencies that are in the signal that it's receiving. You can imagine that the physical limitations of such a cone might contribute to the fact that certain details in the music get lost. Not only that, but when the signal in the cable goes to zero, the cone also has to stop. But as you know, physical objects in the real world, they don't go from a certain speed to zero immediately. There's a certain sort of momentum there. And so the signal that has been trying to represent a kick drum so far, when the kick drum suddenly stops, does the cone actually stop or does the cone keep vibrating onwards, making you think that the kick drum is longer than it actually is? There's a risk there. I don't know what you're monitoring on, but it's a risk. Then this speaker has now turned these electrical signals into air pressure waves. Now these air pressure waves, they come out of your speakers and they, in an ideal world, they go into your ears. Now, they probably do go into your ears, but they also do a lot of other stuff. They radiate out the sides, they hit the walls behind you, the ceiling above you, the floor beneath you, the walls behind itself. All of these reflections, they come back, they get added up in with the original signal, and they keep bouncing off walls indefinitely whenever there are parallel walls. So that bit of air that was trying to represent your kick drum, even when the voltage in the cable is long gone, the cone might still be moving, the air pressure waves in your room might still be all excited and you've been listening to a version of that sound that is added up with all the echoes of that sound all on top of each other and you in your mind you assume that what's on that timeline you are actually hearing that right now if only it ended there now the sound hits your ear which is a whole other mechanism in itself and your ears are not neutral your ears have mechanisms in them for example to contract when it's being exposed to loud noises continuously this is why at a loud festival or something 
thing. In the beginning, you're like, whoa, this is way too loud. And after a while, you acclimatize to it. So the hardware mechanism of your ear is also variable. So circumstances can affect that a lot. And now let's assume that those airwaves have made its way through the hardware system of your ears. Now it has to interact with the software part of your brain, which means your attention span, your subconscious thoughts, whether or not your ears have been trained to listen to the relevant dimensions of the music, your taste, your fears, your childhood trauma, your self-confidence, your sense of fun, your perfectionism, all of these things now come into play when you hear a piece of music. And two people listening to the exact same stimulus are still going to psychologically be paying attention to completely different aspects. So back to the beginning, you have a sound on your timeline and you want that sound to end up in your brain. And then you want your brain to listen to it in the correct way so that you can make meaningful decisions about what to do in your DAW. Each element in your signal chain can influence what's happening and how you perceive that sound. And that's why audio professionals insist so much on being familiar with their system, getting acoustic treatment, increasing the quality of their speakers, and listening to reference tracks on any system, because this helps them calibrate, helps them understand in this monitoring chain how this chain is coloring the sound. And then hopefully make meaningful decisions about how to affect the sound in a way that it will then also sound relatively good when played through some mysterious other speaker in some completely unknown acoustic setup. So as a key takeaway, maybe consider this. What is the element in your signal chain that causes you the most uncertainty? What makes you doubt the accuracy of your mixes? I know that about one year ago, it was my room. I knew that my room was really problematic and was always adding some unpredictable color to my mixes. And so my mix decisions, I could never really be confident that they would translate outside of the studio. Since then, I upgraded with an enormous amount of acoustic treatment and I upgraded from two-way speakers to three-way speakers, which means that each of those woofers has to do less work. And so the overall resolution of the sound feels much higher than it was before. And the room reflections aren't adding all this color to the sound. That was my main problem and the fix was obvious, but also very necessary. You might have a different situation. So look at what your monitoring chain looks like, what's reducing your confidence in your own mix downs, and you can take it from there. If you are a total beginner and want to learn electronic music production, check out my Foundations of Electronic Music course. It's a complete step-by-step -step guide on how to produce electronic music, assuming no prior knowledge as a total beginner. Come discuss these ideas with us on the Discord channel. Leave a comment to let me know your thoughts on the signal chain. Like the video and subscribe to help with the algorithm. And until next time, stay producing, be good to one another, and take care. Bye-bye.